Good day, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Just Fish Outdoors. I'm your host, Dale York, and I designed Just Fish Outdoors to focus on freshwater lakes and streams and to provide information, tips, and techniques, along with how-to segments for catching everything from crappie to catfish. We will also provide tips on equipment, tackle, boating, and much, much more. All of this is aimed at helping you catch more fish and have fun doing it. So join us each week as we talk about my favorite subject, fishing. That brings us to our special segment. You know, folks, crappie fishing is probably one of the most utilized species around our part of the area. And uh, if you want to catch more crappie, you, you just really need to learn more about crappie. And that brings us to our special guest. Our special guest today is Chris uh, Weisenhunt, who works for the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife, and he's a uh, area biologist. So, uh, Chris, I'll ask you to say good morning and uh, tell us a little bit about what you do for the state and what your background is. Well, good morning, Dale. Uh, I'm a fisheries biologist for the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife, uh, like you mentioned. Um, a little bit of my background, I, I grew up in Oklahoma, uh, graduated Broken Arrow High School, went to Northeastern State University where I majored in fisheries and wildlife management and got a degree there. Uh, in 2002, I started with the Department of Wildlife, first came in as a technician in the streams management program, then moved up to a biologist in streams management, focused on streams for about six years, and then the past five years I've been doing uh, regional lake management uh, over here in this uh, Northeast region seven total years as a biologist um, working with uh, the lakes over here that I manage uh, that people might be interested in are Copan, Uloga, Keystone, Hayburn, uh, Bixoma, and a lot of the Tulsa urban fish ponds and uh, the Arkansas River through Tulsa as well. That That's a little bit of my background and uh, hope that qualifies me to help answer some of your questions. <laughs> I, I, I think that more than qualifies you. To, you know, that's that's over my head already. You know, I just catch them and eat them. I don't know yeah. too much about them. <laughs> uh, the, folks, what we're tiling today's story is everything you always wanted to know about crappie, but we're afraid to ask. So what we're going to ask Chris to do, Chris, if you would, uh, take us through a typical lifestyle of a crappie in Oklahoma. I mean, how long does it take their eggs to hatch? How long do they live? How fast do they grow? What are we normally seeing here in northeast Oklahoma? Well, in Oklahoma, uh, we actually have two species of crappie, uh, the white crappie and the black crappie. Uh, their life cycles are very similar. Uh, the real differences are the white crappie tend more towards more turbid water, black crappie like clear water, uh, and white crappie are the dominant species uh, in eastern Oklahoma. But uh, you don't be surprised if you catch a black one. Uh, there's some minor differences in telling them apart. Uh, they both spawn in uh, real shallow areas, uh, sometimes less than two feet deep uh, in early spring uh, when the water temperatures reach around 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that usually happens around April, May. They uh, rarely exceed three pounds. Most often the adults will be one, one to two pounds uh, as they grow. Uh, they they feed on small fish. When they're when they're small, they'll feed on um, zooplankton, uh, real small insects. And as they grow, uh, they'll feed on small fish. Growth rates different from lake to lake depending on availability of food. How how long do they usually live in our nor- in our Oklahoma lakes? What's uh, their life cycle? What's their lifespan? You can see them about four, five, six years. You can see some as old as eight, I think. But um, typically, they reach that ten inch. A limit that uh, is kind of important on some of our lakes around the uh, three to four year mark. So it varies from lake to lake, but uh, five, six, seven years is, is about as old as most of them ever get. So so they're growing roughly, what do you say, roughly about three quarter pound a year, something like that? Something like that. that, that that'd probably be fair to say. When they're not spawning, they'll congregate in loose schools. Um, not really schooling fish, but they kind of congregate together around structures, uh, usually around 15 plus feet of water, uh, brush piles, docks, and things like that is where they hang out. Yeah, they're they're very structure oriented yes, fish. Are. You know, you, 
there's sometimes in the year when you'll catch them out in open water, mm-hmm. and that's usually post spawn. Right after they spawn, they seem to scatter like the wind mm-hmm. uh, for a period of time, and until uh, they kind of regroup and uh, regain some of their strength, it seems like. And uh, during that time, you know, they'll back off the bank, maybe get 10, 12, 15, 20 foot of water, but they'll suspend maybe 10, 12 foot deep, and they'll scatter all over the place. Mm-hmm. So for a period of time, it, it can be rather difficult to 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 find large schools of them and catch them. Uh, how, how's the best way to tell the difference between a black and white crappie? The white crappie have, uh, I believe it's five or six spines on the dorsal fin. You can count the spines, and the uh, black crappie will have seven or eight. You know, I, I know in the summertime, or summertime, not in the summertime, in the springtime, when the males get their spawning colors, you know, it yeah. can be really, really difficult to tell the difference between a black and white crappie. Uh, you almost have to sit there and stare at it sometimes yeah, for a while. Yeah, we kind of discourage a little bit by using just coloration for any f- species of fish to determine species. Uh, a lot of times people have trouble with things like blue and channel catfish. They have a similar shape, similar, you know, fork tail and everything else. Uh, we look at that anal fin almost exclusively because if you look at just coloration in any fish um, they can differ based on the type of water they're coming out of the temperature you know if they're on or off the spawn so um, typically a black and white crappie are pretty easy to tell apart just by coloration Uh, the white crappie would be more of a copper color with some dark uh, stripes going down its back and the black crappie would be almost completely mottled in color where it's really dark blotchy all over the body i Uh, I know the state does some uh netting surveys and some other types of surveys throughout uh throughout the year or certain times of year to to kind of keep a handle on crappie populations and and what the size and the length is and for that population can can you take us through exactly what the department does in some of our area lakes as far as trying to keep tabs on crappie populations? Yeah, sure. Uh, Generally, um, in most of our lakes, we'll do what's called gill netting uh, initially, and that um, gets us populations of most of our open water fish, and we do that in the fall, usually in the September-October time period when water temperatures are starting to cool off. It's something that we look for um, in crappie. If we are concerned about the crappie specifically, if they're not looking good in our gill nets, then we'll go back and do what's called trap netting or fight netting, as uh, some people call it. And it's a design to trap the fish live in the, the nets, and then we'll take them out. We'll weigh and measure all the fish. That helps give us a body condition, and then we'll select a few fish to sacrifice, and uh, we pull out what's called an otolith. It's a little bone inside the, the fish's head that we can then use to age the fish, and that gives us the growth rate of these fish, and that gives us a more detailed look at what's going on with those fish populations. We don't do that very often in most of our lakes, but in some of our lakes it, it is necessary to find out what is going on if we're concerned and how how does the department or the specifically the biologist come up with a formula for determining you know how many fish there should be for acre or what size the fish should be how, how is all this uh, generated so you give a report on the lake i mean uh, what what's the thought process here Over the years and decades of doing research and throughout the state and even nationally using literature reviews, they kind of come up with what is an acceptable catch rate in our nets. Um, A catch rate doesn't give us a population estimate necessarily, but gives us a trend of what's going, a fish population is going up or down based on how many we catch in our nets per net night. And what that does is some acceptable values have been determined over time uh, based on what are considered good lakes versus mediocre. So, so it's all lakes. based on history then? Yeah, it's it's almost all based on history and intense uh, scientific research done just not in Oklahoma specifically, but also just across the country. It's We try to base everything we do based on what is acceptable nationally. You know, we, we try to have really good science behind what we do. You know, you know, one of the things that uh, you know, you, I hear a lot of fishermen talk about is the 10-inch length limit we have on some of our area lakes. Can, can you give us a little history as to what 
the department and the state's trying to achieve and why that 10 inch length limit may be put in place to start with? Uh, many of our lakes are not very stable. A lot of them are designed almost specifically for flood control first yeah. and then hydropower next. And so the lake levels themselves tend to be not very reliable in the time of year when the crappies spawn. Uh, if that lake level isn't right where it needs to be at the right time of year for those crappie to spawn, we could actually start missing year classes. And in some of those lakes where crappie populations are iffy to begin with, or we experience some um, history of uh, decline in population, uh, we put a restriction of uh, the number of fish, which most of them are 15 fish instead of the statewide limit of 37, and then a 10 inch minimum on there. And that's so we can protect some year classes, the smaller fish, so they can get up to a spawning age. And then hopefully we can keep those fish going and people have quality fish to catch in those particular lakes or where we're a little more concerned. So so really that's the whole purpose is you're, you're trying to increase or sustain a catchable population of fish uh, through this process of putting a 10-inch link limit on the lake. That's correct. Okay, okay. And, and once this is done, do you see a correlation? You know, many of our area reservoirs, you know they're they're all man made and they're all getting up there in age. Mm-hmm. A- and do you see a correlation with the the age of some of our reservoirs and perhaps the 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 state of health of some of our reservoirs? Is, is there some kind of correlation in there that we can look at? As it affects uh, crappie population, most of our crappie populations are doing fine, even in our older reservoirs. It, it's not so much the age of the reservoir. Or, for crappie, not really. <laughs> I mean, okay. crappie okay. can survive in just about anything. That, they're one of the most prolific fish in the state. So using crappie as an indicator for our, our reservoir is not so good. Now, if you're going to uh, some of our bass populations or uh, stripers or hybrid, you know, some of those other types of fish that right. are a little right. more sensitive to changes, you know, it it could be affecting those a little bit more. But so, crappie, so what you're saying is crappie are survivors. I mean, they, <laughs> they they they're yeah, especially white crappie that can handle the turbidity and the stuff like that. Right. It's, you know, if you get a lake that's really getting highly uh, sedimented in and uh, the like stru- Keystone, for instance, yeah, and and, and the structure's gone, then yeah. But um, and that's one of the things where you know uh, we can get into is one of our plans for helping keep these older lakes going is putting in structure. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Yeah, we, we definitely want to talk about that. Uh, you, you know, we were – I just mentioned Keystone, and, it, you know, I grew up on Keystone and uh, was fortunate to fish it uh, back in the 60s all the way to present day. And, uh, you know, in some areas we've lost 15 or 20 foot of water depth in some of our major creeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I, I always was – wondered what correlation there would be between the continuing loss of water depth and fish populations. Uh, some lakes it seems to uh, uh, have an impact on, other lakes it, it really doesn't seem to have much of an impact on based on my years of fishing. Yeah. So uh, it, that's kind of interesting. Uh, if If you was to pull out the top three or top five crappie lakes in Oklahoma, how, how would you rate those? What would be on your list? Well, as far as the entire state, I'm not as familiar with some of the uh, more western ones. Uh, I know Eufaula is one of the biggest, and it's sheer size. You've got plenty of room for a lot of crappie fishing. That's a big uh, crappie destination uh, nationwide. A lot of people go there. Um, but if you want to focus on uh, northeast Oklahoma, I would say Copan, a lot of people don't know about it, but we get a lot of big crappie out of Copan. Wow, that's, um, that's interesting. Yeah, we see those in our netting surveys a lot. Um, now, when you're talking big, what are you talking about? Two pounds, or, pound and a half? Yeah, uh, close to the two pound mark. We've got a lot of big crappie uh, in the two pound range. And these are all white Copan. crappie that you're yes, talking about? Yes. Uh, yes. Wow, that's 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 definitely a slab. Yeah, uh, no particular order after that. Uh, Ulaga. Keystone um, and Grand Lakes uh, in our area. Um, some other area lakes that are really good. Uh, um, 
Greenleaf Lake. Uh, it's not one that I actively manage, but it's one that has pretty decent uh, crappie that come out of it too. Um, as far as what's around us, uh, those are some of the better crappie lakes. All right. I would. Okay. And, and if you could uh, kind of educate us on maybe what the state's looking at, especially the biologists, as far as some of your short-term or long-term plans for managing some of these populations and lakes? Well, a short-term plan is something we can do uh, um, immediately, and it's something that we uh, have actually co- cooperated with the U.S. Car- Army Corps of Engineers on, is uh, placing habitat structures in the logs. Oh, lakes. yeah. Yeah, that's a popular uh, program. Yeah, man-made um, brush piles. Uh, a lot of our other regions, uh, we haven't done it much in our region, but a lot of other regions have created what are called spider blocks. Uh, we incorporate a lot of the public uh, schools school ag groups, uh, Boy Scouts, and different uh, outdoor clubs will come and actually help build these structures, and then we'll go sink them wherever the anglers would actually want them. And anglers are actually able to participate in uh, some of these, like on Oolaga uh, Lake. Uh, we had one recently where the anglers got to help build them and put them exactly, wherever, exactly where they wanted them. Uh, we GPS mark them. Those GPS coordinates are carried on the Corps of Engineer website, but also right. on wildlifedepartment.com. Oh, they're on your website, too? Yeah. I knew they were on the Corps site. I didn't know they were on your site. Yeah, uh, you get the the ones that we do with the Corps, uh, plus any of the ones that we've done just on our own or with other groups. Uh, at wildlifedepartment.com, we have a full list of all the GPS coordinates of wow. pretty much every lake that has habitat on it and and folks for you know for you folks that have the that great lawrence hds equipment you know you can go to the oklahoma department of wildlife website and download or or print off or however you want to do it those gps coordinates and plug those right into your lawrence units and you can go right to that brush pile you don't have to know where it's at the lawrence will tell you where it's at and you know if you're trying to catch a mess of fish for dinner that's that's a great asset yeah, and that's one of the things they did when they designed that particular portion of the website is to make it to where you could almost just plug in your equipment and download it uh, and get it directly to your uh, your fish finder. Wow, um, that's but, that's neat stuff. But for those of us that are a little more low-tech, you can also just print <laughs> off a paper map, right? and right. it'll give you icons that are close to where they are, and right. then you can try to find them um, you know, as best you can. And uh, it's a really good resource, and that's... That's the short-term plan is just to create the habitat that the fish will congregate around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of the long-term things that we are, are, have been working on is cooperating with um, uh, the lake managers, whether it's Corps of Engineers or Grand River Dam Authority who do uh, Grand Hudson and uh, Fort Gibson. Uh, try to figure out, you know, a shoreline management plan, uh, mm-hmm. see if we can mm-hmm. figure out how we can keep these lakes at a stable Position oh, that's uh, during important. those uh, yeah. uh, peak uh, spawning times. Now, flooding and right. extreme situations will <laughs> typical take, Oklahoma yeah, weather. Typical <laughs> Oklahoma weather will di- definitely dictate what can and can't happen. But yeah. you know, we try to have an agreement or some kind of plan in place where, if it, when at all, when at all possible, have those shorelines, um, water lines, where. It's good for the fish to have good spawning yeah, habitat. Yeah, yeah, that's so important. You know, it's so easy and happens so many years. Uh, we'll, we'll get a heavy rain and maybe two or three heavy rains at the exactly the wrong time and lose a whole year class of fish. And not just crappie. You know, sometimes it may take a month or more for that water level to come back down and be consistent. And, uh, you know, we may even lose a crappie spawn. We may lose a black bass spawn. You know, even in some cases a brim or a perch spawn. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's just amazing sometimes. Anything you'd like to close with or anything you'd like to throw out that perhaps uh, we need to know about? Well, only that, uh, you know, just encourage people, if you go fishing, you know, take somebody with you that may not have ever been fishing or is limited in their experience. <clears throat> Definitely try to get kids involved. Uh, that's one of our biggest goals is to try to get more and more people out there to enjoy the outdoors in Oklahoma. We have great fishing resources, and it, it's just a wonderful time. And if you can get other people involved, you're going to have more fun too. 
Yeah, a lot of people really don't understand just how blessed the state of Oklahoma is to have mm-hmm. all these surface acres of water at our disposal just any time we want to go fishing. It, it's just a wonderful place. Yeah, it's a blessing. Uh, oh, man. Chris, you know, that's great information, and, and thanks so much for coming on the show today. Uh, I hope you'll agree to come back and maybe help educate our listeners on some other game fish or perhaps projects the the state's working on that we we can help with or at least help get the word out. If anyone has questions about any of our game fish or aquatic resources, how's the best way to get a hold of you folks at the department? If you have questions about any of our regional lakes around the Tulsa area and this northeast region, it's uh, our Jinx office number is 918-299-2334. Uh, we have a few biologists in that air, uh, office that can probably help answer your questions. Uh, one of the best resources uh, to get in contact with any of our other offices is wildlifedepartment.com, as well as the fishing guide and hunting guides have all our contact information for our area offices. If there's a lake that may be in southeast Oklahoma, uh, you know, you can contact those particular people down there and folks you can send me an email too i mean if if it's something i'll forward it right on to these guys and uh, these people these folks are just super and remember they work for all of us so uh they're more than happy to jump right in there and help uh, if you have any suggestions or would like to know more about just fish outdoors or anything we can help with uh, just drop us a line just fish at justfish.com that's J S T F I S H at J S T F I S H dot com. Or you can find us on Facebook, Just Fish Outdoors. Folks, get out and enjoy one of our many lakes or streams. Uh, we're so blessed to have in this great state of ours. Thanks for listening, and be sure to catch us next week. This is Dale York, host of Just Fish Outdoors, saying we'll catch you later. 